All right, so I have uh, my FAR background in there and I put it in as this. If I wanted something even more, <laughs> this is compositing three things already just for the FAR background, which isn't really meeting my goal of trying to keep things simplified this semester, but it's just so much fun. And the FAR background is very easy to customize this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this above the far background and put this in just to show you how easily stars can be composited in. I'm simply going to change it to a pin light or a soft light, right? And then play with the opacity. So if I'm going for this kind of sunset look, I can do that. And then if I wanted the suns in there, really, this is just making one one full composite landscape just of the sky. I can place it and I can decide where I want the suns to be in the composition in the far background. But now I have an issue, right? So I brought all of these in. I brought all of these in as smart layers, which means I can't cut out of them, right? The sun is the first one that doesn't span the whole image that I do actually need to cut out. So how do I do that? I take my lasso tool and you can use your tablet and I roughly cut. I want a lot of overlap. Think of it as like cutting out stickers around what you want from that layer. And then you hit command J to duplicate just that selection onto a new layer, that will automatically rasterize it for you. So you shouldn't ever have to do right-click rasterize. Instead, you just hit Command J and duplicate the parts of that asset that you want to use in your composite. Then I can get rid of the smart layer, and then I can work on compositing this in as an element of my far background. Now, what I'm going to do is move my sketch on top of everything and lock it, but first turn it down to about 20%. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, let's do 30%. Okay, that way I can see where the shapes are and I can see what my sky is doing. So if I want these twin suns, which I can use the auto select tool to find, where do I want them in the composition? How large do I want them in the composition? I don't want to make them bigger than their native reference, but I can make them smaller. Uh, I think I'd probably want them like here, kind of a twin sunset or sunrise. And then I need to soften their edges, right? So this is the blending, and this is new to what we've done. I am now going to use the eraser tool. You are allowed to take away. You are not allowed to add your own pixels. You are allowed to take away though. And I'm going to use a brush that's just a really simple brush. I'm gonna to go to the very top of the brushes and just use the soft round pressure size brush. It's the third one down. That means it's pressure sensitive with my tablet. So the harder I press, the more of it will get filled in. And I can adjust the size. This is a little big. But a big eraser, soft edged, is something we're going to use a lot. Notice I have it at 100% opacity. Because I don't want to have any ghost of a hard edge left. So first, I soften my cutout with a 100% soft edged eraser. That's what it looks like without the uh, sketch over the top of it, right? By doing that, I've already worked a lot to kind of blend it in. <clears throat> then I can play with opacity on that layer. So it kind of sinks into the atmosphere a little bit. And then I can go in and do a slightly more targeted erase around it. But we're just going to do kind of rough placements for now. And I kind of like this, this red halo. So we'll see. I'm just going to leave that for now. 
So that's all going to be part of my far background. So let's look at those composite layers. There we go. The only way we've changed color is just by playing with opacity and layer styles. I can also try just pushing those suns back in space a little bit. Okay. Like that. Okay, now I'm gonna close that far background layer. Turn it off for a second. Look at my sketch. And now we're gonna to go to number four. I'm sorry, number two, <laughs> which is my background rock right over here. So this one's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna find my assets. Uh, I got a lot more than I need. And I'm thinking, okay, what works for that shape? I can always change it. What kind of textures are the most interesting? And I think I want this one. So I'm gonna bring it in. And look, it's almost perfect, just as it is. But I can always shrink it. I can always warp it. Because I want it to fit within the assigned parameters. And organic things are very um, flexible <laughs> to these kind of changes, right? So I want that rock, and I want it to work on this background. So how do I cut it out? So first I use my lasso, and I just do a loose cut around it. Then I hit Command-J and then delete. And then I can turn on this far background layer. And now I can do a better job of targeting the edges of this rock. So often when you have something against sky, the sky is a pretty even color. It's not as easy as a green screen, you know, in an effects house. But the reason having an even color makes it nice is we can use that magic wand tool. So if we use magic wand with a tolerance of 32, which is the standard, and we have it set now on contiguous, that means it will select similar pixels that are touching. So if I click on the blue sky, it does a pretty nice job. And then just hit delete, click on the blue sky, hit delete. I can try it with the road, right? I don't need to worry about the bottom because this is going to get covered up by other stuff. Now, why did that work so well? Well, it's because it was a nice blue sky and rocks have a sharp edge. But you'll always have little things you have to clean up. And so I'm gonna to go to my eraser, still soft edged, but I'm using the, the core of it at 100% opacity to clean up this little, these little artifacts right around the rock. Now, what if I wanted to cut out something that was soft edged, not like rock? So let's see what's next. So I'm gonna label this with violet, and this is my background rock <laughs> from my sketch. I'm only making it out of one thing. It's not the right color yet, but that's what I have so far. So now this next thing is the middle ground, and it's a lot more complicated. So I'm actually going to duplicate that sketch just so I have something that's more opaque that I can show you. So that middle ground stretches from here to here all the way up to here with the sky kind of peeking through. So for my middle ground, I have clouds, and I thought what would be most amazing are these kind of ink clouds. And the reference place I got for these is actually a really good one to know. It's called Pixabay. And this is a, a Google image search type of service. It's like Flickr, right? But this is one where everything that gets submitted to it has to be Creative Commons open source. 
so that all of these images are free to be used without giving any attribution to the author, and you can use them for any purpose. And it does allow you to give a donation to the creators if you want, but it's not required, right? And if you uh, submit 10 of your own images and get them approved for the community, then you become a member and you don't have to see any ads when you're on it. So all great things. I encourage you maybe to think about submitting your fantasy landscape to this resource when it's done, right? Students have in the past. But when I look for Ink Cloud here, I have all these beautiful examples. And because they're on Pixabay, they are all high resolution. Right? And we can also get vectors through Pixabay. So that's a good resource. And they're going to be very high quality, not only open source, but high quality, because they have to be juried to get in. Ooh, this is a nice one. Anyway, so <laughs> that's where I got these ink clouds. They're high resolution, but sometimes not large enough to fill the whole space, right? Of your whole 11 by 14 composition. So I'm going to place the ones I think are going to be most useful. I'm going to combine a few together here to make this crazy ink cloud. That one's just enormous. And I don't need it that big. Remember, I can always flip it. And we'll start with compositing this, which is soft edged, right? That's what I wanted to show you. Um, because it's an organic shape, I can certainly warp it and kind of place it and get it to work a little bit better for what I need. In terms of fitting within the sketch, right? I'll warp it some more, bring that pink down, bring that to the edge. So that's looking pretty good. Okay, now how do I cut it out? Same way. I'm going to use my lasso and do a rough, sharp cut first. And I'll actually use my, um, my guide here kind of gently trace the shapes. Kind of work around it. I want all that kind of mist. Okay. Then I'm going to hit Command J. That isolates it onto its own layer. And I can delete the smart layer underneath. So now, how do I get it to be soft? Well, I can use my, I can just erase by hand with that 100% opaque, large, soft edged eraser. Oops, I need to be on the right layer. And I can get it even closer. And remember, that's the top of my sketch. So there's no reason for me to work a lot on things that aren't in it unless I want, well, because I, I have to stick to that postcard size. But how do I get rid of this kind of black and let the sky kind of come through and the rock behind it? I'm going to stretch it a little bit on this edge. There we go. Okay, so now we turn off the far background, turn off that just so you can see clearly. How can I get rid of this black with a slightly soft edge instead of the sharp edge like a rock? Because mist doesn't have the sharp edges of rock. I'm going to use the magic wand again, but you see how it just cuts out really cleanly and sharp. So this time, after I've used the magic wand to select the areas I want, and I'm doing contiguous, so if I hold down shift, I can add.